Today we are going to hear about the life of Amy Carmichael. Satan is so much more earnest than we are. He buys up the opportunity while we are wondering how much it will cost. Amy Carmichael was born at Millisley in County Down, Northern Ireland on 16th December 1867. It was 1901 in India and a widowed woman was struggling to survive after the death of her husband. Her only choice was to make a sacrifice to their god in order to gain blessings. But the sacrifice that was required was incredibly great. Her own daughter offered up as a temple girl, a servant in the Hindu temples who had to serve as cult prostitute too. and was called as Devadasi. Several years earlier, Amy Carmichael had secluded herself in a cave in the mountains of Japan to be alone with God and pray about her future. She had traveled from her home in Northern Ireland and served as a missionary in Japan, but she knew that God was leading her in another direction. She had so many questions. Would she ever get married? Would she have any children? If she continued serving the Lord alone, would she feel lonely? Amy felt the Lord saying to her, None of them that trust in me shall be desolate. The reassurance from God stayed with Amy throughout her life. In 1895, an opportunity to go to India presented itself. This she eagerly accepted and never again returned to Britain. After a period of language study, she began touring the villages of the Tirunelveli district, Tamil Nadu, with a group of Indian Christian women. She and her companions made a big impact on the countryside with their Bible teaching and their life of example. Then in 1901, a seven-year-old girl who had run away from a Hindu temple was brought to Amy. This incident resulted in the discovery by patient enquiry and research of the Devadasi system by which baby girls could be dedicated to Hindu temples to become servants of the deities. These Devadasis inevitably had to serve as cult prostitutes. Amy was convinced that God had brought these facts to light in order that she should rescue and make a home for children who for this reason or any other reason were in danger of immoral exploitation. After India became independent in 1947, the Devadasi practice was prohibited by the Act of Parliament. However, the system continues to this day protected by much secrecy. Learning of the plight of the temple girls, Amy focused her ministry rescuing them, battling many obstacles. Amy and her co-workers worked tirelessly for the Lord and rescued many temple children. Some boys were also saved and brought into the home. Some grew up to continue Amy's ministry, thankful for God's grace and the missionary's kindness. Instead of experiencing the loneliness she feared when she was younger, Amy became the mother of many children whose lives she had saved. She was called lovingly by her children as Amma. About 30 years after Amy began saving children, she fell and injured her leg. The injury kept her bedridden for 20 long years. However, Amy continued to serve God by writing numerous books and thousands of letters to her children from her bed. When she was bedridden, Amma wrote many thousands of letters to her children whom she adopted in Donavur, whom she called as her own family. Almost daily she wrote to them in which she shared the thoughts that the Lord had given her. They were intended only for her children, but a selection of those has been published as daily meditation called Edges of His Ways, Whispers of His Power. Once Amy wrote to her children, 
It's a great cheer to know that these notes are sometimes a help. There are so many of you and your needs are so various and your ages are so different that it is impossible any one word should be for everybody. No archer ever shot several hundred targets with one arrow. But if any arrow finds its target, I'm content and grateful. Amy, who was called as Amma, often located the temple children to rescue them by dyeing her hair and her light skin with coffee powder in order to enter temples undetected. She was sorry to look just like one of the women in that locality. Prina was the first child Amma adopted in Donaur. Prina was the seven-year-old child, the daughter of the widow who gave her to be as a temple Devadasi. Prina's miraculous escape on the sixth day of the month held such significance for Amy that as her ministry grew to include hundreds of children, they would gather to pray on the sixth day of every month. At this time, they would dedicate each child to the Lord and pray for those that still remained in danger. Through her untiring and courageous efforts, Amy Carmichael brought international attention to the plight of many temple children. Eventually, her labor was rewarded when the practice of giving children to temples or marrying children to the deities became illegal. Amy died when she was 83 in Donavu Fellowship, the place which was a home for the children who were lost. Amy's prayer was, Give me the love that leads the way, the faith that nothing can dismay, the hope no disappointments tire, the passion that will burn like fire. Let me not sink to be a clod. Make me thy fuel, flame of God. Amy Carmichael was a British missionary who arrived in India in 1895 and stayed there till her death in 1951. Some of her quotes, One can give without loving, but one cannot love without giving. When I consider the cross of Christ, how can anything I do be called sacrifice? Missionary life is simply a chance to die. It is a safe thing to trust Him to fulfill the desires which He creates. Thank God He doesn't measure out grace in teaspoons. Those who think too much of themselves don't think enough. We have all eternity to celebrate the victories, but only a few hours before sunset to win them. If a sudden jar can cause me to speak an impatient, unloving word, then I know nothing of Calvary love. For a cup brimful of sweet water cannot spill even one drop of bitter water, however suddenly jolted. But God is the God of the waves and the billows, and they are still His when they come over us. And again and again we have proved that the overwhelming thing does not overwhelm. Once more by his interposition, deliverance came. We were cast down but not destroyed. It is not the place where we are or the work that we do or the work that we cannot do that matters. It's something else. It is the fire within that burns and shines whatever be our circumstances. God, harden me against myself. Our loving Lord is not just present, but nearer than the thought can imagine, so near that a whisper can reach Him. The word comfort is from two Latin words meaning with and strong. He is with us to make us strong. Comfort is not soft, weakening commiseration. It is the true strengthening love. If I take offense easily, if I am content to continue in cold unfriendliness, though friendship be possible, then I know nothing of Calvary love. The saddest thing one meets is a nominal Christian. 
can we follow the Savior far who have no wounds or scar? I wish thy way, and when in me myself should rise and long for something otherwise, then Lord, take sword and spear and slay. All along, let us remember, we are not asked to understand, but simply obey. One can give without loving, but one cannot love without giving.